For over two centuries, a small stretch of water in the Pacific Northwest has gained a notorious reputation as the graveyard of the Pacific. Since the 1800s, it has wrecked over 2,000 ships and claimed hundreds of lives. To this day, it remains as one of the most dangerous waterways that ships pass through on a regular basis. This area, where the outflow from the Columbia River collides with the Pacific Ocean, is known as the Columbia River Bar. Hi there guys, for the past few months, our ship has been plying the trade route between Japan and the US, crossing the Pacific to load our cargo in the port of Kalama in the state of Washington. We have been loading corn from the Columbia River area for the past three voyages, and some of you have expressed interest in the Columbia River bar. Now, I must admit, <laughs> I had no idea what that was at first. So, of course, I did some research and was actually surprised to find out that for the past few months that our ship has been going in and out of the Columbia River, we have been passing through what is called the Graveyard of the Pacific. The Columbia River Bar is a system of bars and shoals at the mouth of the Columbia River, which runs between the states of Oregon and Washington in the USA. The bar is where the river's 1200 mile flow crashes into the massive energy of the Pacific Ocean's waves, which, depending on the direction of the wind and ocean swell, could generate large waves, sometimes as high as 12 meters. In addition, the river's outflow carries a massive amount of sediment, which creates sandbars that shift every season. Now, I have been in and out of the Columbia River many times in my career, but so far, I have never experienced any significantly rough sea conditions while crossing the bar. Well, I guess I've been quite lucky all this time because apparently conditions can change from calm to life-threatening within a few minutes due to changes in wind and wave direction. You'd think that with all the danger that the bar crossing presents, ships would just avoid it. However, this waterway opened up the region to massive profits, and to many people, the financial gains outweighed the risks. So for the past 200 years, more and more ships attempted the crossing. To increase the chances of crossing the bar safely, ships hired local mariners to aid in navigating the treacherous waterway, and in 1846, the then territory of Oregon established the Columbia River Bar Pilots. To provide further aid in navigation, a lighthouse was also built at Cape Disappointment in 1856.
but the threat of running aground the shifting sandbars remained. So in 1885, the Army Corps of Engineers started the construction of jetties at the mouth of the Columbia River, which created a nozzle effect and sped up the river's outward flow, which then drove all the debris further out into the ocean to prevent clogging at the river's mouth. The project took over 50 years to complete, but as a result, the jetties greatly reduced the risk of sandbars forming and also acted as a breakwater against the powerful waves of the Pacific Ocean. After all of these improvements, the channel became much more predictable and more ships gained access to many inland ports, which at present accounts for the movement of about 40 million tons of cargo valued at $23 billion each year. Nowadays, ships are fitted with modern equipment and the pilots can now board them using helicopters. These technological innovations more or less guarantees a safe passage. Well, most of the time anyway. The Columbia River Bar may have been made predictable with mass ingenuity, but as with anything related to nature, it can never be fully tamed. In this day and age of modern equipment, the Columbia River Bar can still claim its toll. As I have mentioned earlier, this was our third voyage loading cargo in the Columbia River. On the previous voyages, we did the bar crossings at night, so I never really had a chance to record anything. But luckily, on the third run, we were scheduled to enter during daytime. As our ship approached the entrance to the Columbia River, the bar pilot radioed in the rendezvous point. We then proceeded to pick him up. On our previous runs, the pilots boarded our ship by helicopter. This time, however, he was brought over to us by boat. Once on board, the pilot's task will be to navigate the ship safely through the Columbia River bar and all the way into the anchorage area off the shores of Astoria. Bulk carriers usually drop anchor here for cargo hold survey and await their turn to go alongside the terminals for loading operations. Having learned the history of the Columbia River Bar, I now have greater appreciation for the apparent serenity that the Astoria Anchorage provides. It has always been a safe haven for me after weeks of crossing the Pacific Ocean, especially if we get to stay at anchor for at least a few days. But the term safe haven gained much more relevance for me now that I know that before our ship arrived in these calm waters, it had to go through all of the potential hazards when passing through the graveyard of the Pacific. <laughs>